what I'd like, what I'd like to just talk about is, is my work, uh, my background, first of all, I think. I've got two main points to make. One is there's a demand for creativity uh, from the social sector, and the other is there's a demand for creativity from the commercial sector. And the second point is that by customizing and designing projects um, which deliver on multiple fronts, that, um, that there's a, even with the current economic climate, I guess, there's, there's actually possibly even more of a demand, more of a window for um, the likes of us. But I'm also conscious that in talking about the work that I've done in the past, that um, I might assume things about the Australian and New Zealand context which you might not be familiar with. So I've actually had to try and <clears throat> adjust this a wee bit to, um, uh, and try to explain things. Uh, so I'm not quite sure. I'm used to sort of getting up and talking about this stuff, um, taking certain things for granted. But so I'll try to contextualize it as best I can. The other thing is I'm more used to talking about my work in front of economic development, people, corporate sector, and social services. And as an artist, when I stand in front of a room of artists, it's far more nerve-wracking. <coughs> it's a bit like when you were a kid being asked to sing in front of your and <coughs> being asked to sing in front of your aunties. Um, the, uh, my own background: um, I trained in the photographic and fine art in the photographic department at the University of Tasmania, <coughs> and went on to teach there. My postgraduate work was in photography and theory. So I've always had an interest in um, practice and, and more theoretical debates. Um, the, in 1993, I kind of tumbled out of the academy into the trade unions, as Christine has, has said, and found there, uh, this, was, this, was in Tas this was in the island state of um, Tasmania, and found there, um, what I call a, a, like a, a spurious dichotomy between the so-called high end of practice where I'd come from and the so-called community end, particularly at that time the trade union end. <clears throat> and um, so that, that was, a, that was a quite an issue for me, it was quite an eye opener. And the next thing was, was that when I did get into the union movement, I discovered that there was certain things that they wanted to achieve. One was a more friendly community face. They were getting an awful lot of bad press in, um, in Australia. And the third thing was, was the strategic development, if you like, arts development in relation to getting artists located into sectors beyond the arts, jobs in other words. So from 1993 to 1998, um, my response to that was to go to use the union movement as a, as a way in, as a side door into the corporate sector. What we started doing was talking to employers, what, what, we did, what we did was rather, <coughs> rather than adopt the traditional activist and oppositional approach to trade union arts practice, what we did was we started looking for, because the unions weren't in trouble, um, professional and a more community friendly face, we started targeting employers that the unions approved of, that were good employers, and going to them and saying like, we would like to recognize your, um, your good industrial relations by designing a project for you that connects you to the community and that your workers might value and we'll use artists to do it. And the criteria of all of my projects was uh, that whatever's produced should stand up as art in one way or another, <coughs> rather than the artist relinquish all the creative control, retain all the responsibility. Uh, so, so during that period from 1993 to 1998 or 9, we worked with breweries, um, footwear companies, uh, the, the Blundstone Boot Company was one. Um, the Amcor Pulp and Paper Mill in Burnley. Mining communities. We worked with speech pathologists, diagnostic imaging technicians in hospitals. We put an artist into the Royal Hobart Hospital um, whose work was about uh, spirituality, so he was using diagnostic imaging technology to look for his soul. Um, social historians, museum curators, Hospitals, um, we worked with a lot the Hobart Hospital in the wake of the Port Arthur shootings. Mental health services, marketing professionals, school cleaners, environmental scientists, the fishing industry, designers, composers, choreographers, opera companies, visual artists, writers, filmmakers, and local governments. The program at the, um, the, the, at the outputs of this program 
well, an opera, which I'll talk more about in a minute. Um, <coughs> books, social histories, a choir, which is still going, um, but also marketing materials and industrial relations outcomes that were measured by the, by the partners in their own terms. Um, so that's, that's just a little bit about how we got into it. This was before we had heard of um, triple bottom line or corporate social responsibility. Um, and it was before this construct that has emerged called the creative industries. Um, so when, when these things did happen, I felt like it was kind of, I thought, hallelujah, you know, hello, I'm here. 